Okay. Um, so I'm going to reuse actually um, a demo I, I did uh, in the past. Uh, I did a little game and I have already all the assets. That's why I'm reusing it. So some of the assets I completely ripped from uh, this is from a Corona um, uh, sample actually. When you download Corona you have a lot of game samples already or very small uh, snippets etc and this is part of the samples it's a rock or coconut uh, this uh, uh, team is something I ripped a sprite sheet I ripped from an, a game you might know which is called Braid great game an I independent, uh, independently developed game so I'm going to use this sprite sheet uh, to have an animated character. <coughs> I think I'm doing this illegally, just, just for the record. But I don't think he will mind. Um, and uh, just to mention that the, the sound we're going to use are, are basic, very basic MP3s. Uh, I have a sound for wind. Is, is it too loud or it's okay? Okay. And here I have a music. Uh, so the, the the topic is uh, we're going to play a sort of Indiana Jonesy guy who is entering a mysterious temple. Okay, and so I, I ripped the music from YouTube. You, you'll see it gets weird at, uh, after, but we'll see that later. And just to show you the last asset, this is something I did quickly with my iPad doodling, you know, with my finger, with a, an app. And then I put, I put that on Photoshop and I did two or three like operations and, and I get that. And, and this is great for prototypes, like, uh, it, it, well, you'll see. <laughs> um, this is also one I did exactly the same way. Okay, let's get started. So, in Corona, you start. Sorry, oh, check. When you start uh, Corona SDK, it opens this, and if you start with the terminal, you get that. On Windows, you have also a terminal. Um, this is very useful to debug. You know, you can print stuff here while your program is executing in the. Um, simulator. I'm going to show you that immediately. This is the final application. You see, you have a, an emulator like that, uh, and you can uh, you can print stuff here while it's executing here. So that's like really, really useful. Um, you can simulate different devices, like iPhone 5. Hop. Yeah, the, the screen resolution of the Beamer is not perfect, but. Uh, it looks good when I deploy the, the thing. Um, you have iPad, uh, the, the old I the good old iPhone, and you have all the, of course, so we're going to simulate on a Android, of course, tonight. Okay, let's choose maybe a smaller one. Not sure I can. Mm. Yeah, okay. No, that's good, actually. Okay. And to create my program, I, I'm going to use a very simple uh, text editor. So I'm on a Mac, and I happen to have TextMate. Uh, I'm not trying to sell it. Um, there are a few solutions out there, but uh, TextMate is one of the solutions who have a uh, Corona bundle that you can download, add, and then it recognizes the Corona functions, etc., and it's uh, it's going to um, autocomplete, etc., your your code. So that's that can be very useful. Okay, so first thing we're going to uh, load the sprite sheet. Yeah, much better. We're going to load the sprite sheet and uh, and add uh, little features to control our guy. So add the sprite sheet, animate the guy, and add. A basic GUI to to go left and right and okay. So how do you do that in Corona? Um, oh, first sorry. To create a project, a new project in Corona, a new application, and just create a new folder. You call it 
super game, go inside, and then you create a new file. called main.lua and that's it you have an application so if I go here and I reload open yeah mm -hmm. I changed the device orientation. In the other project, I had a configuration file that said um, this application runs in landscape mode. So that's why automatically the emulator was in landscape mode, just for your information. So we're going to do that here actually too. Um, but just so you see, I have here, you see, hello printed. So that's how you debug very basically in Corona. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this. Um, I just need the configuration file. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat, mm -hmm. since we don't have a lot of time. I'm going to copy it from the other project and put it here. And hmm, that's weird. Mm. <laughs> ah, yeah, sorry. It's the other one. There are two configuration files. The other is build.settings. Yeah, that's this one. Okay. So, there. Voila. <coughs> Okay, so since we don't have time, I'm, I'm not going to talk about this. Um, okay, so we have, I should do like that. We have a file here, uh, which is our sprite sheet. I just put it uh, in, the, in the folder like that, and now I'm going to load it. Yes, I told each sheet, I, I reuse code and I have my cheat sheets for almost every function, so don't be surprised. Um, so what you need to do here is first uh, import um, an optional library um, that by default Corona is not loading because if you um, if you don't use sprite sheets, it's going to use a lot of memory for nothing. So that's why you have to manually import it. And we're going to load a sheet first. So the sheet is basically this file. So it's sprite dot new sprite. What I'm doing here is I'm pressing escape. And you see this is autocomplete from the, the Corona bundle in this program. There are other programs that work with Corona in, this, in a similar way, but just so you know, it, it makes my life easier and I avoid uh, typos. Okay, so the name of the file now is team team 2 for some reason. And I have to enter the size of one frame. So, usually if you download a file like that, you get all that information. Or you can rip it from the internet and guess with, your, with Photoshop and stuff. So, in this case, I, I know it. And it's 30 pixels wide on 34 pixels high. Uh, height. And now, I want to load uh, all the frames in what we call a set. So it's sprite dot new sprite, sorry, sprite set. I reuse the sheet 
and I load the frames from one to uh, I think it's the last one. Uh, okay, so I think it's all those ones. These plus this. Basically, I ignore I ignore this and and that. So it's from one to twenty-seven. No, I think I'm wrong. It's it's from the first one, and this is the number. So it's twenty-seven. So it's uh, yeah. So that's it. I don't know why I'm ignoring this one, but okay. Um, so now I'm going to add animations. I'm going to define my own animations, give them a name, a custom name, for later use in my program. So from the set, I'd like to define run. It's from 9 to 27. This is 100 milliseconds. And this means a uh, loop forever. Um, you have many options here, like minus one, minus two, one, two. You can do like uh, twice all the frames and then stop. You can go until the end of the frames and then bounce back and stop, etc. Here, I want to loop forever since it's the running. Um, okay. Now I want to define, I'm not going to talk about local in this example, in this demo. Uh, you, you should have to come to one of my trainings to learn more about Lua and Corona and why use local or not. Or okay, so I'm going to keep it simple. Um, I'm going to call it hero. And the hero, um, is a, uh, a sprite. <coughs> yep. And what we want to do is uh, display it. So display it running. Okay, let, let me just try to insert it first. You see the guy is here? This is hero. If I remove this line, he's not here anymore. So at the moment I put this line, I'm creating a graphical object. And by default, he's displaying, I think, the, yeah, the first frame of my set of this. So it happens to be the first frame of the sprite sheet, but it could be any frame, actually. It's just the way I define it. Sorry. And now, just a quick break. Um, usually, I always, at the beginning of my program, uh, create those two shortcuts, because the way to retrieve the, whoa, no, I don't want Polish. Sorry. <laughs> um, the, the way to retrieve the width of the screen and the height of the screen that are very, very useful uh, I use them all the time. It's very long, so I prefer to define them in, in constants that are just one letter. So I'm going to say display viewable content width. So this will be W and the other one. Display viewable content height will be the height of the screen. <coughs> so this is in pixel. And what is great about programming this way, uh, using, of course, I, okay, I put those constants, that's just because I want to have a compact code. But what I'm also doing is that I'm gonna program my uh, graphical engine, uh, depending on the, the actual size of the screen, which means on an iPad and an iPhone, I don't care anymore about the number of pixels, but I care about how my world or my graphical user interface is feeling in proportion the screen. Um, there are also ways to detect the device and if you're on a tablet you want to have different display etc. This gets more complex but it's possible you can detect the device 
In my case, I'm going to have exactly the same display on every device, just proportionally. Okay. And what I want to do here is simply center the guy. So I'm going to do like that. Oops. Hmm? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> OK. And now, what I want to do is hero prepare the animation. I called it run. So this does nothing. And what I want to do is play. Voilà. Can you see? It's a little. Uh, is it? Uh, oh, it's very dark. Can we make it brighter or? Yeah, or turn this off. Uh, <laughs> the, the last rows, you, you can distinguish the. The, the, the guy? Uh, anyway, we're going to put some background because now he's on a black background, so... Uh, okay, I wouldn't worry too much, actually. Um, okay, so now the guy is running. What we want is um, to... have um, a background. Sorry. What we want is to have a background that moves um, when the guy goes right or left. And the way we're going to build it is simply that the character is always going to be centered on the screen. Uh, and everything uh, that is part of the world will move. Okay. So that's when uh, artistic decision we make in the project. Um, so, um, yeah, okay, yeah, I should, add, I should add the world first. Okay, so I'm going to use this uh, column. And I'm going to... Um, define a variable here that I will call my world width or size if you want but I'm going to put it in pixels so that's why I call it width and it's going to help me later for many things so let's say it's going to be w times um, I don't know 16 so the guy can cross 16 times the width of the screen before reaching the end of the of the level. That's a very basic uh, example. It's like, uh, but in, in <coughs> platformers, it's a, it actually works. Uh, if you want more advanced level design, of course, you do it differently. And what we're going to do is um, every. So this is the character columns. Um, we're going to put a column every. I don't know. Uh, I think uh, in my example it's 150 pixels. So um, column x equals. So the first one will be at uh, I don't know what did I put here. Yeah, let's say 200. And while column x So now I want to load this image. What I'm trying to do here is put all the columns uh, in the temple. What I want to do here now is just to load this image. So there is nothing uh, easier in Corona, and I do it like that. Display new image rect name of the file. So it's column 124.png. 
And I have to put, when I use this method, the actual size of the file. So I get it like that. Voila. And I just put a local here, so you, you start to guess what local is for. OK, so it's dummy, but you get the idea. Uh, we're just going to put them a little lower, so it looks less stupid. Uh, will that work? Yeah. Oh, awesome. We're going to fine tune later. What I want to show now is that I'm going to have a world here. It's going to be a group, a display group. I'm going to put all the columns in that group. And when the guy will move to the right, I'm going to translate just the display group world to the left. And I will just have to translate one graphical object, the, the group world. And everything that is inside it will translate. Um, and so there are two syntax to put the columns, uh, the graphical objects call inside this group. So the most clear syntax is to do this. Voila. There is a shortcut, and I'm going to use it um, because I need space. <laughs> the, the screen is really, <laughs> I don't have a lot of lines. So I'm going to do it. This is the shortcut. Very convenient. So now you, you, it seems like nothing has changed, but actually now all the columns belong to a parent group that I can translate. And what the main thing I need now to do, the, the only thing I, uh, remaining, is to define what happens in my uh, graphical uh, refresh loop, you know? So you do the, this like that. So I create a um, anonymous function. How many among you are familiar with uh, creating functions like that? You know, I, it's something that you do a lot in jQuery or uh, well JavaScript uh, in general. Like, you know, you, you know what I'm doing right now with this function here. Hmm? So basically, what I what I'm doing is that function on enter frame do stuff <coughs> okay and here I'm doing this I'm registering enter frame and I put the name of the function but instead of doing this <coughs> so this will do okay so first I explain that this uh, will register this function to be executed every time the graphic engine uh, refreshes and it refreshes refreshes uh, 60 times per second it's 60 fps if your device is really slow uh, then corona adapts and it's going to be 30 fps but in most devices you get 60 fps so you can do really fluid animations that's why in in this function if you are moving objects and we are going to move the the columns the background you want to move them like pixel by pixel because you do that 60 times per second you know um, so yeah and what i was doing previously was that so i don't give the function a name and instead of referencing it here i with the definition, so it, it becomes anonymous, and um, I hope I, I'm not confusing. Are you? No, it's okay. Okay, good. Uh, 
and I'm cheating just to be sure my math is good. Um, so yeah, so on every frame, what I want to do is move the world. We're going to do a simple test, okay? Okay, so this is one, one way. I'm going to do the more elegant way. Oops, I think it's like that. Yeah. Voila. So if I want the guy to go faster, of course, I do this. Maybe it make, makes more sense like that. Then, then you test, you know, etc. cetera. Um, OK. Now what I would like is to have a very simple GUI, you know, graphical user interface, to be actually able to control the guy. 30 minutes. Merci. So this is very simple, actually. I'm going to add two buttons. Um, I'm going to use simple rectangles and register them to, to react on touch, and it's going to do stuff. OK? So go left will be a rectangle. I'm going to put it here. I'm just going to define um, a variable for the, the height of, the, of my GUI. I, go, I'm, I want to put it here, actually, the buttons, left, and maybe here, right. And I'm just going to define the height of that. I'm deciding it's 10%. Uh, maybe it's even too much, I don't know. So this will be now H minus QI8. And the button will be, I don't know, up 100. This also could be a parameter. And QI8 times uh, 0.8, for instance. Yeah. So this will be my go left button. OK? Let's do like this. It's a little bigger. Um, now I'm going to register an event. And depending on what I'm doing here, um, I want to do various things. Okay, so first I'm going to check it works. Okay, so for instance, uh, I can do hero. I think it's stop. <coughs> no, it's not stop. Pause, maybe. I can't read. There is not enough light. Let me try. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> that could be a game concept. I don't know. Um, OK, so it works. The, the button is uh, wired. So what I want to do is uh, when I press on the left button, I change direction, and I move, on the, I move to the left. And if I release the button, then I stop. OK? So I want to move only if I'm pressing the button continuously. So this is when you need the phase of the event. So began means you you start pressing. Actually, I don't need that. And ended means you release the button. Okay, so okay. 
Here I'm using a little trick to change the direction. I don't have other assets that, uh, to go left or right. I'm going to use exactly the same sprite sheet and just I'm going to mirror the sprite sheet. This is a trick that happens to work in that case. Maybe with other assets it won't, but here it works quite fine. It was both, right? Okay, so here I stop pressing, I'm still pressing, and now I release, and he's stopping. Okay? So that's, we are targeting the right uh, events and phases, and now we want to do more uh, intelligent stuff, of course. So what we're going to do is define simply a uh, um, control dot, or I don't know, uh, Okay, what, what I can do is actually attach a variable to the guy. And to declare it, I simply have to, well, you know what, I can even, I can even use X, X scale. Since I am storing an information here about the direction and it will be either minus one or one, in that function, I know what direction he's running, you know, so I can move the world accordingly. So I'm going to reuse that variable actually. So basically what I can do is that more or less. That's just a simple trick. Okay. In actually in, in, in this uh, which is something I showed in Paris I, I had like three variables like uh, am I moving left true false am I moving right true false and then I do if and then I translate to the left or to the right and this is actually much faster and compact code might be a little hard to read uh, reread you know so sometimes you want to have those variables and or at least comments but anyway um, Okay, so that's good, and now we want to go right. So this one is going to be quick since it's the contrary. Uh, we're going to put it uh, tag minus 10 minus uh, 100. Basically, it works. Now we have to take care of the animations. OK. So this is where we go back to our sprite sheet, and we need the animation when he actually is not moving. OK? So. We're going to call it still. And from the info I have, on here because I don't want to spend time uh, looking at the sprite sheet. It was uh, number 28. So it was the 28th. Voilà. Okay, and now we don't want to do pause. What we want to do is Because pause means that you stop animating, you stop using the sprite sheet features. What we want to do is prepare the animation still. It sounds a little odd, but this is on the technical side what's happening. And voila. Now, of course, I have to take care of two more things. The world should not uh, move. So. I'm still going to need a variable. And here, if If 
hero is not still. So it's really weird, but in Lua, the not is this character. I'm sorry, it sucks. You know, you know. Can you see what it is? It's a tilde. Right. Can I zoom? <coughs> so this is the negation negation in Lua. Don't don't shoot, please. But it's uh, it's really counterintuitive. It sucks. And on Mac, with uh, certain uh, text editors, it's really hard to type. So this is a nightmare, actually. Okay. So if the hero is not still, then I translate. And I have hero is still. Ah, sorry, no. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, no. You use uh, you use the tilde when you do this. Okay. This is the equivalent of um, exclamation point in JavaScript. But if, if you're directly using a, a boolean here, then you can use not. So, okay, let's try. Then I stop. So I didn't care of the animation of rerun again, but I'm gonna do that in a second. Basically, it works. And you see it's really, really quickly implemented. Okay, so here we have to <coughs> and here we can optimize a little by putting that outside <coughs> not optimize sorry um, make the code co compact voilà voilà Okay, so I have a sprite sheet, a GUI, uh, I have a world that, uh, that uh, moves, and I have, um, um, yeah, I have animation, etc. Um, how much time do we have left, Alexandre? Alexandre is gone. <laughs> One minute? Okay. Because um, I wanted to, sh I mean, in my program there are parallax, uh, but let's vote, okay? Because I have to show you three more things. Uh, next would be Parallax, but there is a ton of uh, Parallax uh, tutorials uh, on the internet, so I don't know if it's interesting or not. I, I can show how to do it in Corona, but um, after Parallax, I wanted to add some sound, and after that, I wanted to play with light effects to create the impression that when you enter the temple it gets darker and darker you know and uh, I, th that looks awesome actually uh, so who is okay to skip the parallax hmm. okay you, you decide Alexander <laughs> no, I'm, I'm proposing that because we have only 20 minutes left yeah, let's keep. Okay, I, I get back at the end uh, if I can. So the sound actually is really easy. So I'm going to add those. My project, sorry. And I want to load them uh, at the beginning. Uh, why do I do that? Because loading can take time, so I do it very early in my program. That's why. Yes, that's the only reason. So I'm going to call it wind sound equals audio dot load stream. Corona offers you the the ability to um, load. They handle differently the music that will be load stream and the uh, SFX sounds. You know that are very short sounds that don't occupy a lot of memory. Uh, and it's simply that the, the, the stream will be read, you know, with a buffer, etc. It will point to the file, while the SFX will be put in memory for fast use, like it's when you hit with a sword and you, you need to do it several times per second, like ting, 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 ting. So you, you need that sound in memory. Uh, here we're going to use MP3s that can be read 
sl slower and scary music. It's uh, what's the name of the film? track? Okay, and now I have to play. Um, so where is it again? Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna talk about this, but just so you know, you have, uh, you, have uh, you can use several channels for the sound, so you can put a lot of sounds and mix them and have different volumes and etc. And you can fade the sound. Here I'm gonna do something simple and I'm going to play it immediately. So, wind, sound, it's, uh, no, it's audio, play, and sound, I think. Sorry. Voilà. And at the beginning, I want my hero to not move. So I'm going to initiate it to. And still. Voilà. So he's at the entrance of the temple. And what I want to do is as uh, he's entering, you know, uh, the, the sound of the outside of the wind uh, fades away. So you have the impression and just, you're gonna see, but just with a simple effect, a trick with, the, with sound, you can create extremely powerful uh, atmosphere more than with images. Maybe some of you already know that, but it's, it goes the same with movies. Uh, sometimes a shitty movie is really impressive just because of the music and the sound effects. Um, okay. So, to do that, we're gonna update a variable called uh, how much our guy is inside, you know? Um, and what we want to do, do I have a camera? Wait a sec. I did a little drawing. So, can you see? I, of course, it reverse. <laughs> what I want to do is that if I'm at the beginning of the temple, I want 100% uh, volume. And I want it to fade for like, I don't know, uh, 2000 pixels, whatever. And then to be zero. And to do that, it's very simple math, actually. But this is gonna be this gonna this number is going to multiply the volume of the sound of the wind. Okay, this is the beginning of the temple, and this is like the uh, deep inside the temple. Okay, so. I'm going to call it, uh, so again, local, um, percent, uh, percent outside equals, so it's 100 uh, minus 100 by the, I said it was 2,000 two pixels, let's say it's uh, twice the size of the screen. Okay, and it's uh, doo -doo -doo, times the position of the hero. Yeah, that's the math. Now the problem with that is that it's gonna be, be it's gonna go below zero. So I want like it's gonna do this basically. It's gonna go like that. You know, so I want it to stop at zero. Yeah, you always need a little mat to do games. Uh, probably you know that already. Uh, so I'm going to take the maximum between this and zero. So I'm sure it's if it reaches zero, it stays there. And I'm going to adjust the volume simply. So since I, I don't know by heart, I'm just 
cheating and looking at my yeah okay okay so audio dot set volume Mm, okay. Uh, so I want this to be one. Yeah. Okay. So the volume has to be between zero and one. So that's why I'm securing the math here like that. And um, what I'm doing. Is doing that. Mm. Okay. Oh, sorry, no, it's then that should do the trick. Let's try. Doesn't seem to work, huh? <coughs> so for faster testing, I'm gonna use only once. Ah, okay, I know what might be happening. Yeah, of course, I ignore that because we don't have time. Okay, so it's possible that I'm not uh, targeting the right channel, so first I'm gonna take care of that. And the way we do that, yeah, so, where is the sound? I'm just guessing. <coughs> Could be that. Mm -mm. No, still no good. So it's the minimum between. Okay, let's just try this out of curiosity. Okay, so it doesn't work. <laughs> huh? <laughs> No, because the, the thing is I'm using a very, very different math in this example, so I'm just trying to dynamically do it. It's okay. Uh, let's do that. I'm going to actually manually reduce the volume. <laughs> uh, wait. What did I do? Okay. 
So, 50. Oh yeah, this is just not working. This is bullshit. Okay, that's why that's why nothing's happening because this this number is not moving enough. Hero. Oh my god, I'm stupid. Hero dot x is always the same value. Yeah, I have to correct with the um, uh, the uh, you know it's world x actually something like that. This would be 100, and so it's yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so let's try again. Yeah, so I'm gonna do it louder. <laughs> Again, huh? Okay. And let's say that when I reach, uh, for instance, here, <laughs> yeah, again, please, when I, when I reach, let's say, 15%, uh, you know, I still have some wind, and then I start the music. You know, so I still have some wind, but then, boom, I have the music. So, So if percent outside is below 15 and not started, music started, then audio that play, uh, it was uh, scary music, right? I ripped uh, this music from uh, YouTube. It's uh, it's an actual religious music from I think Bali, Indonesia. Uh, but it's they 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 start to sing and it just sounds very Indiana Jonesy, but it almost scary. I'm gonna let the music. Just so you know, in the in the example uh, I made uh, in Paris, I I tweaked I tweaked everything. So when you hear the first uh, voice, if you're going continuously, and when you when you hear the first uh, singing, you see a statue that is like this. <laughs> so it's. Uh, and with all the darkness and etc., I'm going to show you actually the the one I did previously uh, that I'm redoing now. Did you uh, draw that? Yeah, also with it's it's also a doodle. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And the next step is to animate uh, every arm. Yeah, you can do that. Actually, there is a a tool, very cool tool called Spine Spine 2D, and it's actually not on only for Corona. Um, that I'm trying to sell. <laughs> no, it's, they're, they're uh, really cool guys, and they did. Uh, so you can do skeletal animation. Uh, so it's not sprite sheets anymore, where you have frames. It's actual an actual skeleton that can react to physics events and stuff like that. So you can have like an arm that falls and that crushes something, and it's it's crazy. Uh, but that's a lot of work. <laughs> and. If we still have a little time, how, mi how much do we have? <coughs> yeah, no, but tell me like five minutes. Five minutes? Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, simply show you what uh, I did uh, with the other app, you know? Um, yeah, because if you have five minutes, then I can show you like what the code looks like if you want. So I'm going to change the project. So here I used the 
an API of Corona called Storyboard that allows you to have a menu, a screen, etc. So this is just some dumb, dumb image to figure that you here you would have a menu typically or a story or something. Then you click. Then I did nice buttons. Then this is to jump. And at the beginning you see nothing. You're like, where am I? You know, and you're going. And there are many things. So there is parallax on the parallax mountains and columns. There are parallax too. These, the braziros, they have a little uh, halo here. That is an image that that uh, on every frame moves by one pixel right and left. Uh, additionally. And if you look carefully, you see that I have uh, several layers. Uh, I have two black layers and one white layer that help me to simulate. So the, the white layer is the fog, the snow that is outside. So if I go by the um, entrance, I get the, f the snow again. And it's blocking my vision. It's like a, in the top of Himalaya or, so, or something. You see, and this is like the volume of the music. I adapt the alpha of this white layer uh, with the position of the guy, like, like we did for the volume percentage. And then inside I have two black layers. So one is uh, displayed behind, wait. <laughs> one is displayed behind the columns and it simulates the fact that when you enter more deeply, you cannot see outside anymore. And one is uh, uh, something that is on top of everything and that has a hole here with a little uh, gradient, you know. So it's, it's transparent here and it's black here. And, and I use it as a basic mask, you know. And this, this very mask, it himself, uh, as I enter more deeply, I make it more uh, opaque. When I'm outside, I, I just put it transparent, completely alpha to zero. But when I go deeper, it simulates the fact that the darkness is like closing on me, you know. And those both effects, so this uh, mask, and if you see, you know, now the mountains are fading, and that's because of the other black layer that is behind the columns. And here, oh, oh. what is that? So you see, when I'm nearby, I have this icon that appears. And oh, I forgot to mention that this is jump. And I can take it. And then I'm cursed. And uh, like in every Indiana Jones movie, when I run, ah, you know. So I, d I can't with the mouse uh, switch, you know, but if I were with a device, I could like jump. And the point is now to escape. Uh, with jumping, you know, the obstacles. Voila. <laughs> well, I hope you like it, and uh, I propose the following. Uh, since we should be over now, uh, if you're interested in seeing like the snippets of this, there are two ways. I can you can either come and ask me, and I show you, or actually this whole project. Uh, the one called Gilgamesh is on my uh, it's on my github so you can just download it and run it in Corona on your computer I'm gonna give you my it's github.com slash silver thorax if I'm correct yeah and it's in Corona demos Gilgamesh okay I'm gonna leave that here voila now let's. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, was, I, I was about to say let's drink. No, sorry, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay, thank you, David. Thank you. No questions. Um, maybe, maybe after. If somebody has any question, maybe after with the food and the drink, we can discuss about it. Yeah, Flashing sure. All the so <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's good. So we keep on time and, yeah. and we do questions after. <laughs> exactly. Okay, good. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I hope you like it. Uh, good luck. Uh, oui. Okay. Merci.